called Warner Modular that was a division, small division of Warner, uh, the early Warner uh, uh, publishing house. And the, uh, the owners got, we had a, a little document called blood baths, about blood baths in, in, in reality and in myth. And it was really to quite an extent about the about uh, Indochina and the, the Vietnam War and uh, Indonesia. And our argument was that the really big bloodbath was the one we brought to Vietnam, which killed maybe four or five million people. And of course, in Indonesia, we supported Suharto taking over and at the cost of maybe a million people being killed. But the, the media, of course, have never called these bloodbaths. So uh, and we wanted to write it. We wrote a little book that was telling about who was the re what was the real bloodbath and who were the people who were responsible for it. But the owners, the Warner people up top, got wind of this thing. And before the thing actually could be published, they they seized it. And they they really said they destroyed it. They they made it impossible to publish it. And actually, Warner Modular, the little affiliate, was cl closed down very quickly. So it was a beautiful case of suppression by a big media corporation. We then, Chomsky and I then, after a few years, decided to enlarge it. So we actually enlarged it to about five times, ten times the size of the original and put out this book uh, that you won the Washington Connection, uh, which had a, a, a partner volume. On, on Indochina alone, called After the Cataclysm. The idea that the United States in, in, the, in the Third World is a sort of a charitable, a benevolent operation is, is straight out of Orwell or maybe out of Kafka, because we, we're not do-gooders in the Third World. We, we have, our foreign policy is dictated by the, 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 the demands of the really powerful actors who are really the transnational corporations and the banks. And what they want is a, a favorable environment of investment. And the problem for them is after the Second World War, you know, a lot of colonial areas like Indonesia and Indochina began, were freed of colonial oppression, but they were led by nationalists and people who really were maybe concerned about their own people. That, wouldn't, that, that wasn't what we wanted. We didn't want them to be concerned with their own people. We wanted them to have an open door, to let that, our investors in and take care of them, and not to help trade unions and uh, engage in welfare programs that would, would be very expensive. We wanted those societies to be oriented to serve us. And to serve us means a, a favorable climate of investment. A favorable climate of investment means weak or no trade unions. It means weak or no social welfare expenditures. It means an open door to private investment. And to get that is, is not easy where you have nationalist regimes. So what did we do? We supported military regimes. Uh, we supported the, so Suharto's overthrow of a, a relatively democratic regime. And of course, the, the most very important case was Iran, where we, in 1953, we organized the overthrow of a democratic government, put in the Shah of Iran as a dictator. Uh, and then in Vietnam, we, we, we could not tolerate the idea of Ho Chi Minh uh, uh, ruling. Uh, he was a, a Vietnamese nationalist and even a communist. And so we intervened heavily. And of course in South Vietnam what we did was import a, a man from the United States, a, a Vietnamese, to run the place. He was a dictator. And of course Suharto was a dictator. The Shah of Iran was a dictator. And in Latin America, in, in the 70s and 80s, we imposed a, or supported a huge array of dictatorships. And, and there was a thing, it was a, a forum called the National Security State. And in Latin America, 10 different national security states were organized in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. 
and we supported every one of them. One of the, probably the most important was Brazil, where a democratic government was overthrown and a military regime, a torture regime, was imposed starting in 1964. And of course we supported Pinochet, overthrowing a democratically elected government. I mean, it was all over the place. Another really key incident was Guatemala, which we, we had supported the, a dictator before the Second World War. For years we supported this dictator. And then the Guatemalan people threw him out and brought in a democratic government, which lasted 10 years. But during that 10-year government, that government passed laws permitting labor organization. And in fact, one famous book argues that it was at that point when this government allowed labor unions that the United States took, became hostile to the government. And then they tried a land reform program in the early 50s. That was it. And the uh, United Fruit Company would, was upset at this, and they had a lot of influence in the U.S. government. But it was, it, we organized a, an invasion and overthrew the dem the, For 10 years, there was a democratic government in Guatemala. We couldn't stomach it. So we then helped overthrow it and imposed a, a, a national security state in, in Guatemala, which led, lasted and up, up to, you know, essentially, well, it, it, there's no longer a national security state, but the, res, the remnants of that national security state are there. It's still a state of fear and oppression. But the, during the national security state years, there are hundreds of thousands. There, there, there was really a genocidal policy carried against, out against the Mayan Indians. This was all, they were our baby. We were supporting this gangster, monstrous government. 